The Animatrix is a collection of animated shorts released straight to video between the first and second Matrix movies. Since the Matrix was partially influenced by anime, why not turn that around and see what Matrix-related animation can do? Only one of the shorts deals directly with the plot of the trilogy. The rest show us a bit of the Matrix's history and the lives of a few people who interact with it. Since the animations are mostly unconnected to each other, I'll discuss them individually in order of my personal preference, least to most favorite. Program didn't do much for me. The animation is appealing, but that isn't enough to carry it. The action is mainly centered around running fast, jumping high, and cutting things in half. With abilities beyond what we've seen from typical Matrix protagonists. This is a case of just because you can doesn't mean you should. Stylizing action sequences has a cost. When using animation or special effects, your characters can do almost anything imaginable. But does the audience care? If you've seen Can's review, you've heard a convincing argument that in the first movie, the rules of Matrix abilities are introduced to us slowly, which makes it interesting when Neo can break them. Likewise, we're introduced to his character before he makes use of the abilities, so we're invested in the outcome of the fights. If I have no context for the normal abilities of a Matrix samurai, I can't be surprised at or invested in what I'm looking at. Dropping me into a fight scene where, as far as I'm concerned, anyone can do anything at any time isn't very interesting. In the end, this feeling is validated when the story turns out to be a prankish training program, the cliché of, it was only a dream, one less reason to care about what I just saw. Matriculated was a disappointment for me. Peter Chung, the director, had previously done Aeon Flux, which has a few similarities to The Matrix. The main character in that series runs around having cyberpunkish adventures with outlandish action scenes, and I was excited to see how those elements would translate to The Matrix. Instead of this... Wow. We get a story about converting machines to the side of humanity through artificial reality, similar to The Matrix. Now, as a high-concept idea, this has possibilities. What are the moral implications? All right, yes, machines are tools. They're made to be used. It's their nature. To be slaves. It's why we can show them a better world, why they convert. But that world we show them isn't real. But instead of exploring either ideas or outlandish action, we get a whole lot of scenes that try to show off how cool the artificial reality is. I think the worst example is this sequence where the confused machine participates in a ridiculous and complicated game so that we can see computer animated things fly around. Because of the weak setup, it doesn't mean much to me when the machine converts at the end. It seems like it was convinced by the strange shapes and pretty colors, rather than by any meaningful interaction with humans. I'm not sure why the second renaissance is two shorts instead of one, but I'll discuss them together since they tell a continuous story. I don't really like the loss of the green on black shell aesthetic in favor of the 3D stuff in this framing device, but I guess it's not all that important. This is a documentary about the events that led to the Matrix. To make a long story short, after artificial intelligence was created, there was a machine civil rights movement, a war, and apocalypse as humans blacken the sky in the last ditch measure to wipe out the machines. I thought the references to real life events were handled very poorly. The parallels are so blatant that instead of feeling like a chilling possible future in which humans fail to learn from their past, it seems like a cartoonish parody of events that are difficult to joke about. This was pretty effective, though. I don't know what it is about this sequence in particular, but there's something profoundly disturbing about it. Maybe it's that she seems to be immune to the strikes at first because of her metal exterior, and then they just hit her again and again to make up the difference. In my mind, the documentary puts a neat spin on that whole question of why the machines would even want to put up with a matrix to use humans as an energy source, rather than, say, whatever animal has the most efficient metabolism. Maybe they just hate us that much. Final Flight of the Osiris is one of the two shorts written by the Wachowski brothers, the writers-directors of the Matrix films. It opens with a sparring session between the captain of the Osiris and one of the crew members. It's nice to know the people outside the Matrix get to play around in their free time to stave off thoughts of the horrible post-apocalyptic world they live in. And the relationship between these two is part of the story, but this scene goes on way too long. 
It's like that scene where Morpheus challenges Neo to show him Kung Fu, but without the knowledge of the two characters to make it meaningful. Also, instead of one combatant being experienced and toying with the other in order to provoke him, it's just two flawless people flawlessly acting out a fight that seems arranged in advance. Fortunately, the rest of the short is much better. We get a reveal of what's coming in the main Matrix plot, and a heroic sacrifice. It's coherent storytelling with the pacing of an action movie. If you ever wondered how Zion found out about the machine invasion, this will tell you. Dan Davis, the subject of World Record, is one of the most fleshed out characters in any of the Animatrix shorts. He's single-minded in his pursuit of being a record breaker, and instead of getting indignant about accusations of cheating, he redoubles his efforts to run even faster. He's calmly arrogant, and I want to see him vindicated. His integration to the Matrix is a less interesting aspect of the story. If you can understand the falseness of reality by being really good at sports, can you also do it by being really good at backgammon or kite flying? It's just not a very interesting premise. The animation is sometimes really great, as when Davis's body starts shutting down and he wheels himself forward. But the whole thing just spins out of control. Do we really need to see him defy the agents again at the end? It seems like there aren't enough plot elements to fill even the short time the animation takes up. Beyond, like Program, isn't related to The Matrix very closely. It could easily stand on its own as a story about a haunted house. There's quite a bit of setup that takes its time to make the glitches in The Matrix seem as significant as they really would to a group of children who discovered them. In some ways, this short is the most contrary to the tone and content of the Matrix films. There's basically no action, and the characters never learn anything about what's really going on. It's just a simple story about discovery and loss, and it even has a bit of a dark undertone, since the glitches are treated as something unique and magical to be grieved over when they're actually evidence of an all-pervasive lie. A detective story is, appropriately, a noir detective story set in the Matrix. Noir is hard to do correctly because it's usually a narrator pelting you with cliches, but this was self-aware enough to keep me interested. Thanks. Our main character is trying to track down Trinity, but she turns the tables by trying to help him discover the truth about the Matrix. Like any good noir story, it has a tragic and cheesy ending. It was good, but the conventions of the genre don't allow for many surprises. The setting of this short seems a bit different from the Matrix we're used to. Maybe it took place in an earlier version of the Matrix with the previous Trinity, or was Neo the only one who appears every time? I guess it doesn't make too much sense, but I don't mind. The look and feel suits Noir better, and you can't really fault changes that are used to improve the story. Kid's story is much better if you just watch it. The story, written by the Wachowskis, isn't very good on paper. A high school kid suspects reality is false and, inspired by a brief communication with Neo, runs through his school from agents until dramatically entering the Matrix by sheer force of will slash attempted suicide. But it's executed beautifully. The animation is nice, but the real appeal is the direction of the action. It's always nice to see someone use animation to do a pitch-perfect action sequence that couldn't be done with actors on wires. And thankfully, the problems with program are not present here. We get just enough setup and knowledge of the average abilities of a high school kid make the action tense and surprising. There's really not much else to say except it's my favorite of the bunch. At the end, we see that the kid was named after Karl Popper. I don't really get this reference. Karl Popper had two ideas famous enough to be referenced in a movie. The really big one was that because limited evidence can't support a universal theory, knowledge proceeds by falsification rather than confirmation. The other one was that the products of the human mind, such as language, art, and scientific theories, are a category of reality called World 3, similar to the way that dualists believe material objects and ideas are categories of reality. You could say Michael uses falsificationism to refute the conjecture that all real things exist in the world he knows, or that he rejected his senses because of a World 3 theory of how reality really works, but these are tenuous links at best. You could probably put any philosopher's name on the tombstone without making it less appropriate. My guess is one of the Wachowskis likes Karl Popper and just wanted to reference him. After ranking these shorts, 
I looked up to the directors and noticed that my top two were both directed by Shinichiro Watanabe of Cowboy Bebop fame. Perhaps this is a reflection of my personal biases, since I also enjoyed Cowboy Bebop, or maybe Watanabe is just a good director. To understand the Animatrix, you need to be familiar with The Matrix. Though the stories are disconnected from the central Matrix plot, the short format doesn't allow for much groundwork to be laid, and most rely on previous knowledge of how The Matrix works. One even uses Neo as a plot device. Beyond is the only one I could imagine anyone enjoying in isolation. But even if you are familiar with the series, the quality of the animations is inconsistent. Some seem like fan fiction, some seem like scenes from a sequel that were judiciously cut in order to focus on the main plot, and some are just fun to watch. Maybe that's the point, to get a wide variety of interpretations from different artists. I didn't enjoy several of them, and that accounts for a huge chunk of the runtime, but it's not fair to judge the good ones by the bad ones. If you can see them a la carte, I'd recommend that you do so. <laughs>